Hi and welcome to the tutorial for D3M. D3M is a tool that's designed to help you manage your networks, collaborate in real time with colleagues, and generate professional proposals. First things first, you're going to want to open up a web browser and go to app.d3mradios.com. This is a cloud-based application, so you can access it from anywhere. When you get to this web page, you're going to want to enter your login credentials and hit the sign-in button. So let's get started. Once you've entered in your credentials, you'll be brought to the projects page. The projects page displays all projects that you yourself have created and have been shared to you by someone else in your organization. Before we get too, too far in, I just want to show you a button in the bottom right hand corner of the screen called the intercom button. If you're ever having trouble in D3M, you can click on this button and start a conversation with one of us here at D3M. Don't forget, we're always here to help. The project page is fairly simple. Use the search bar at the top to look for a specific project by typing in its name, or you can use the filters on the left hand side to filter by a specific office or perhaps only pre sales and deployment projects. This makes it easy to find the project that you're looking for. If you want to create a new project, come to the far right, hit the new project button, and populate all the relevant fields. It's important to have accurate information here as at various times, D3M pulls the information from this page and uses that information elsewhere. So we're going to go ahead and start building. So once your project loads, you'll be brought to the diagram page. On the right-hand side of the diagram page is your canvas. On the left-hand side is your libraries. There are three different types of libraries. First is the default D3M library, which we've populated with some icons. Below that is your own personal user library, which is where you can create custom new resources for yourself to use later. Below that is your organization library, which will be populated with icons that your organization has created for you and your team to use. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll start with dragging out some items from the default library. Start with the switch, put in a repeater, a duplexer, dipole antenna, and a portable. So the first thing you'll notice is that the icons, once they're dragged out, are actually in a more technical view. So I've zoomed in here using my mouse, and I can see the physical ports on this repeater. So we'll go ahead and start making some connections. So I'll use the switch to connect to the LAN port on the repeater, do the transmit port to the transmit port on the duplexer. As you can see, there's two different types of connections. A LAN connection here is indicated in blue, transmit and receive in yellow, and data in black. So I've made a couple connections here, and we've got our basic system design. Now, since the canvas is unlimited, you can have a project that's rather large here in the canvas. I'm going to go ahead and drag out a two-repeater hospitality bundle that I've created, and I'll show you how to bundle icons later. But as you can see, now that they're both on the canvas, it's kind of cramped. So we've created a way that you can actually create areas on the canvas to make things a bit easier on yourself. So I'll create an area here, and I'll name this the north side of the hotel. I'll do the same for the small network that we designed here, and say that this is the south side. So you can keep things separate and organized, and you don't have to scroll all over the place. All right, so I've saved those two different areas. We're good to go. All right, so now since this is an IP connected network, I'm going to add an additional switch and connect these two different sides of the hotel. So I'll connect these. Now, I think I've done a pretty good job creating this network. I'm confident in it, but it's always good to double check. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share this project with one of my coworkers, Chris, and see what he has to think. So I'll add his email in there. Now I can select whether I want Chris to just be able to view this project or edit it 
for edit and share. Now I trust Chris, so I'm going to give him all the power. I hit the share button. Now Chris is going to receive an email, and he's going to have the ability to now enter this project and make changes. You know, project sharing in D3M, it's all about real-time collaboration, uh, working with your team and your coworkers to make sure everything's set the way you want it, uh, so that when you do present it to the end customer, everything looks great. So I've just shared it with Chris. Now we might even see him come into this project and make some changes to our diagram. As you can see on the bottom right hand corner of the screen, Chris is now in the project and he's actually added a couple portables to the south side of the hotel. So the next thing I'd like to show you on D3M is icon properties and the fleet map. So this is one of the things that differentiates D3M, the fact that you can associate properties to an icon. So if I go here and click on this repeater, for example, uh, you know, on the right hand side of the screen, you have all of the properties for this repeater. Um, I can toggle on the visibility here of some of these properties. If it was important, for example, to record the model number, I could make that visible or take it away. Um, you can also scroll down, add new properties. Um, if you wanted to, uh, you could say that, uh, you know, it's type 2, uh, for example, uh, and add that property, make it visible, take it away. Um, you can go further than that and edit the ports on this repeater, uh, add ports if it's a, a special type, or you can write an internal note. So when you record all this information on the diagram, it also transfers over to the fleet map. Um, so if we'll click in here. For example, we're on the housekeeping portables. You can see the name, the manufacturers, the model numbers, all that sort of stuff. Um, from the diagram data, it generates this fleet map, a bill of materials, uh, and eventually a professional document and a quote um, for this system. So uh, the fleet map has a lot of functions uh, that you would find in Excel, for example. So if I select uh, all of these radio IDs, uh, you know, we'll get rid of these ones, and we'll say that. This is radio ID 1, this is 2, this is 3. You can select all of these, click the far bottom right hand corner, and it will autofill all the way down and put the proper radio IDs. So it's fairly simple to manage your fleet map and record all the information. Uh, you know, of course, this is cloud based, so you can access your fleet map information from anywhere. And uh, you don't have to do redundant data entry. Every time you put something in the fleet map, it transfers to the diagram and vice versa. So it makes your life a lot easier. Okay, so the next thing we're going to take a look at is how to create an icon inside of D3M. So we do have a great icon library here, but we're not always going to have all the icons you need. So first thing you're going to do is scroll down on the left hand side uh, to the user library and hit this plus sign. So it's going to ask you to name your new icon. Today we're going to create dispatch console. So let's type that in. Now First step is to select an image. So we have a big library of vector images you can choose. And if I search for a console, for example, I'll find a couple examples. Now, if you're not satisfied with these, you can always come down here to the bottom and upload your own custom image. Today, I'm going to go with this one. So now we have an image of it on the right-hand side. That's what it looks like. I'm going to make it a bit wider, a bit taller, and I'm going to add some ports to this. Um, so these are the physical ports on this dispatch console. Uh, you know, I'm going to add an IP port. We'll say that's the LAN. And I'm going to add a data port for the USB where we're going to plug in the mic. Uh, you know, you could also add, uh, what else do we have here? ACDC for power, whatever you feel like. So all the relevant ports, we add those onto this dispatch console. And we jump over to step three. So step three, we're going to record uh, the important properties about this dispatch console. Uh, so I'm assuming that'd probably be make. So we'll say that it's by Teldio, uh, you know, the model it might be uh, late 2016. And what else can we do here? We'll say IP address. Now, I don't know the IP address, but I can still add that as a property and add the value later. Um, so at this point, once I'm satisfied with all the properties, got them in the order I want, I can come down here to the bottom and save this to my user library. Remember, that's for me personally to use. If I want everybody in my organization to use this, I can click to the right and hit Save to Organization Library. It does have to get approved by an admin, uh, but if you want to have one person create a bunch of icons for your company, you can do that. So we'll hit save to user library. As you can see, it's now here on the left. I can drag it out onto uh, the canvas here and use it. So that's how to create your own custom icon. Uh, the next thing I want to show you is how to create an icon bundle. This can be really convenient uh, when you're creating large systems, especially if they're similar. 
next time you have a hotel that's got a north side and a south side, you actually can just paste an icon bundle instead of having to drag everything out individually. So I select everything using the mouse, uh, just dragging it over the whole network. I'm clicking with the right click and I'm creating an icon bundle and I'm going to go as a hotel setup. So now I can actually go into my user library and find hotel setup and drag this out later uh, without having to do this all over again. So I'll zoom out and I'll drop one in here and now we've got an additional hotel setup in the same canvas. So it can be convenient especially if you're doing large networks uh, to be able to drag out something uh, that's already been pre-configured. You can still come in here and make changes later if I want to attach these switches uh, or really change anything. Uh, you have that ability, uh, but it'll save you a lot of time. Okay, so next we're going to take a, a look at the file section. Uh, it's a fairly small section, but very powerful. So if we jump up to the top of D3M and we click on the file section, um, this is a central location for you and your team to store all relevant information about this project on D3M. It's a cloud-based app, so you can access this information anywhere, uh, and it just makes it a lot easier for your team to collaborate when you guys are working remotely. So you can create folders, upload files, and it's as simple as hitting the yellow button. All right, so the next thing we're going to take a look at is documents and sharing. We make it pretty easy in D3M to export any information that you've put in. So you're just going to come up here to the top, click the export button, and you can actually download a fleet map, a technical diagram, or an icon diagram. But you can also make professional looking documents, so I'll show you what those are like today. Go up to the top, hit the documents button, and you're going to create a new document. So you have to have a, a title here, so we'll go hotel chain, and we're going to use one of our templates that we've already created, uh, and you can manage those here at the bottom. So I'm going to click on Sales Proposal. Now, this document is uh, created from a template that we've already made. Um, when you're creating a template, you use these content blocks on the left-hand side. We've got one for text, image, diagrams, and fleet maps, and you kind of drop them into this document. So we've already filled out some text um, content here, uh, you know, uh, some highlight to, to show you exactly where to edit for this proposal, you know, a little bit about us, um, and at the bottom, we've got, uh, you know, our diagram. Uh, so when you're using the documents function, it actually pulls all that project specific data and puts it into the placeholders uh, that you put here when you're creating the template. So as you can see, we have uh, this diagram and I can actually pin it to a specific site and show only that if that's what we're uh, discussing at this point of the document. Um, and you can do the same thing with fleet map. You can select uh, specific items or all of the fleet map. Um, so it makes it easy to kind of include all of the relevant information about your project in a document. You can then share that document with um, a customer. So they don't have to have D3M. You just go up to the top here, click that share button, and uh, you can send it to, the, to them in an email. Or you can actually, uh, you know, just copy this link here and... Um, you know, get them to actually open it up in a web browser just like this, and they'll be able to have access to that document. Now, this will update in real time for them as well, and um, so they'll have access to the most up to date information about, uh, you know, this uh, system design right away. So, we try to make it as easy as possible uh, using D3M that you can kind of share this document with anybody who needs to see it and not have to keep resending that uh, item. So, They'll be able to come in here and just view the document. When they get down to, uh, you know, the diagram, for example, they can move it around, zoom, uh, zoom out, kind of switch on the technical view or the icon view, whatever you like. Okay, so that's it for today. Um, we've gone over a basic overview of D3M, and hopefully you found it helpful. Um, if you do have any questions, uh, you know, or feature requests, definitely reach out to us here, uh, you know, in the bottom right-hand corner by using intercom. We love your feedback and, uh, you know, it can uh, help us develop our roadmap for what we want to do with D3M next. Thanks for watching.